Broadcasting from the lush but not lavish studios located in the basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Film Snarkitude. This is Real Spoilers, episode 697. Yeah. The black smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> the you, black rotary phone? I guess it was kind of smart. I guess. It's it's kind of in a way. The, the, yeah. the black scary phone. Yeah. The black scary <laughs> phone. <laughs> So uh, let's go around the table and everyone can introduce themselves. This is Joe. This is Kevin. And this is Tom. And joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Ryan Terry. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? Hey, guys. I'm doing great. Thanks so much for for having me on. It's always a pleasure to get to sit down and talk about film with you guys. It's not a, it's not a Thursday without your show coming through my AirPods. <laughs> so I uh, always have a lot of fun. So thanks for having me back. Well, we're, I mean, we're contractually obligated. This is a horror film. So we have to <laughs> give it? you right of That's, first refusal. I agree with you, Tom. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Well, but we we'll, thought it was when we'll, we asked we'll, it. We'll, yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. Before we get into the movie proper, uh, shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us while you're there. Be sure and uh, follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave a review for the people that come along after you. They know what maybe we're worthwhile. And you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash real spoilers. While you're there, like the page, join the group, and uh, also become a League of Show Shares member. It doesn't cost you anything and just spreads the word about the show. People who were kind enough to share an episode this week, Heather Sachs, Ralph Tribble, Ella Grace, Tammy Sherman Powers, David Rojas, Lane Levanway, Ron Johnson, Julianne Jordan, Librarian Cynthia, Travis Tewitt, Chris Falls, Chris Magic Man, Nerd Adonis, Braid1991, Invasion of the Remake, Spoiler Piece Theater, Chris Williams, Dirty Bit Podcast, L Is Not Well, The Real Pete, Ryan Terry from the Forza Crowd podcast, uh, circumventing the Brad Hyen rule. All right, <laughs> better watch uh, it next just, week. Just next yeah. week, yeah, yeah. Uh, Geek to Me Radio, Minorities Report, Binge Movies, In Session Films, Nostalgia Cast, Ronnie Castle, Chris Wilson, uh, Feel and Film, and Matt Neglia. So thank you very much, guys, for sharing an episode. And finally, we have a Patreon, patreoncom slash spoilers, where for five bucks a month you get all sorts of bonus content and you help us out. And we like you extra. And we've just started doing the Evil Dead series. So okay. that is the first one's in the can. Kevin will be joining us at least for something. We don't know which ones he's going to be well, doing. I'll check but... my schedule. Yeah. Have yeah. Time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Matt and I are going through the Evil Dead. And we're actually going to do the show. Like we're going to do one episode on each. Se- not oh, of the TV Not show. individual ep- episodes on individual episodes. Yeah. But we're going to do one season for one episode. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, there's all that. Let's dig in to the black phone. This... <sighs> This is not a horror movie. It's so it I has it, it has horror elements. It does, and supernatural elements, yeah. which are typically associated with horror films. But I think I I know there's been mixed reactions, and I think if you make your peace with the fact that it's a thriller, yeah, not a horror movie, yeah, you're you'll you'll have a different experience. It's kind of like film. a darker. I don't know, Tom. I I watched it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna hang up on that phone because <laughs> it was it. I loved how it delivers on atmosphere and tension. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think the characters are largely one dimensional. There is no growth. And standing up to your attacker is not personal growth. That's just, that's flight or flight. That's yeah. just instinct. <laughs> so there's no real, sta- you know, and so it's like your, your, your one very weak lesson wasn't even communicated uh, that well. And, and I think the, the great cast, I have no issues with the cast, atmosphere, tension, that all works really well, but I really kind of feel that uh, Derrickson took a page out of the A24 book, which in my opinion means all the emphasis is on the aesthetics because we're going to we're gonna be intentionally pretentious to have to be able to say, oh, you just didn't get it, one of those type of films. And so we're going to aesthetically take a page out of their handbook, but like A24, fail, again, in my opinion, to follow through on a good story. See, my, and so that's that's my issue with Black Phone is it's it's just and even who is this for? 
it's just like who who's the audience for this? So yeah. I think this is like a darker version of an Amblin movie. Like this is this this oh. reminded me a lot of like the I think the time period, but I don't think the tone felt that much like an Amblin movie. No, but I mean it's all kids. Like and there's the adults are barely in the movie and the e- cops even are the attacker. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and the the cops are kind of dumb mm. and can't figure this out and that's uh, like those are the pieces of a See, of I don't old... think the cops are dumb. I like I I guess I don't mean dumb, because but they're not I, I I don't think cops' default position should be maybe there's something supernatural at play. <laughs> that's like that's that's fair. That's, that's fair. <laughs> and, and what's up with the supernatural? It's just like I it's I feel the film has this identity crisis where it's yes. like okay, uh, either be supernatural or be grounded in reality. This whole trying to be both, it's just it just doesn't work it, and ultimately it comes off. It could have very easily been campy, and I think had it leaned into camp. I would have enjoyed it a lot more because it there's um, a lot of overacting uh, in it, and a lot of it, underacting it's too. Way it, or and then you've got under uh, the cops underacting. We've got the kids overacting, and so I, I think when you take something that should have been camp and make it into something a bit more, in, where your your intent is to make it something more thoughtful and serious. Then it just uh, suffers and is relegated, you know, to something seen and forgotten shortly thereafter. My quibble with the film is I never understood the rules. Like I sure. never understood like how the phone worked, why it worked, why why it happens to be in the home of a serial killer. Like you know, like I wanted some sort of connective tissue as to why the supernatural element was at play. And this it's a hyper- Tesla phone. It doesn't yeah. have to be plugged in. It gets power. So it's it's it, that, it's uh, it's an Elon Musk uh, rotary phone. <laughs> but do and, and, you know? I'm curious about that because I was kind of thinking about that as I had questions when I left, and I you know purposely they didn't give you answers to all these questions, and I wonder, do we really need that in movies? Like, can things just be supernatural and have? I they- guess for me, at some point, it starts to just feel like a plot device. Like, oh, but mm-hmm. the ghosts will save them, and I'm just yeah. like, well, how well, is I- that functioning? And I don't necessarily need a 40 minute, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, origin story of this phone but I would like <laughs> some sort of connective tissue is to like because the coincidence the coincidences or if you're a Latin speaker coincidence I <laughs> start to stack up because it's like oh there happens to be this phone where the dead kids can talk to him oh and his sister happens to have well, they, telekinesis they, and they, no now wait a second so I took it as the the guy who play the, the dad tells the the sister, the the daughter. That's uh, Jeremy Davies. He was in Lost. Oh, he was also on Super, uh, not Supernatural. He was on uh, Justified. Okay, I just always remember him as Daniel Faraday from Lost. Oh no, he, I was trying to figure out why I recognize. I've never him. watched a single episode of that show. Uh, it's a good show, is it? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's a it the ending under delivers right. But, but I it's watched a, the whole it's a fun ride. I watched the whole series again though, and I think removed from it, it works a lot better because we had invested a decade of our decade right. of our lives and then we're like that's the ending yeah. but when you go back and you watch it all and you can binge and you're not waiting week to week to, right, week right. to year to year and then you're like that's the ending it kind of flows better all together it really does i i was impressed on my second watch right. except for the tattoo episode well yeah we don't talk about <laughs> how did uh, jack get his tattoos <laughs> but now you know so tom you uh, you made a, a good point about questioning the rules of of the film and and we don't establish them. And, you know, with any, you know, uh, well-written screenplay, you can do absolutely anything and get away with anything right. as long as you set it up. Right. You can do whatever you want. It could be way out of this world. If it's properly set up, we will believe it. And so we don't ever establish why these ghosts uh, and, and are still contained to this room. Right. They, they can manipulate the, the world around him, but they can't unlock the door. They can't. If they can't go upstairs and there's like five <laughs> kids helping them why didn't four of those kids help the fifth kid so okay so here's what here's here's what i think is the dad establishes that the mom had the same right. power right yes. so we know that the daughter has the power and i think and some, the, I think and I think the, the son, son has too. something else and that's why he can but they never really show us the son having that's the power. true and so that's fair i think they do it's called the black phone and it's talking to him like i <laughs> but think it's that is the his... one and only instance like yeah. i i i would have wanted to see some sort of 
nod for the audience of like this kid has a version of this. He, sure, he right. just doesn't know I think, it. Yeah, and I think the, they and just the, tell you. And the black phone is really almost a placebo for him, right. To tap into it. Yeah, like, I, that I don't, would have been a good setup. I don't think the black phone has any powers. That's the key. Right. I think it's him, and that is a dead phone off the hook, and he's just using his powers. And the, there's no one on that phone. Well, the phone must have because it still rings. Because the I think he hears it ring. The serial killer hears it ring. But he oh he says like like I it it's the static uh, electricity that makes it ring. It that's there's no fair. reason to answer it. Like it's not it doesn't actually. He work. does say that you're so right. So it's not just in his head. And I think that if if they'd have made that tweak, I think this would have been a much better received mm-hmm. film overall i like the story i like what they do i like the payoff at the end that all of the failures end up leading to a success like i like i i totally dug that yeah right and I, and I enjoyed the ride it's it's still like it's a moderate success for me i'm not like yeah. this movie's amazing i think it's one of those movies that will probably make a dollar fifty at the box office people will stumble across it on oh. streaming with zero expectations blow up and be like oh that was fun yeah i think you know? i think this is definitely a streaming giant like this people are gonna find this again it isn't like when you talk about the writing it's made it's um opening to like 20 to 25 million dollars so it's actually mean, doing really gave, well gave oh really two million it's a blumhouse movie so um did, okay real quick did you notice the new ti- the new title sequence for blumhouse no i did i liked it <laughs> so it op- you know the old blumhouse is like the chair in the room mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so now it's Michael Myers standing behind a tree. Oh. It's the the people from the purge, like as the camera's pulling out. Oh. Like it's the people from the purge. It's the the house from the conjuring. Like I was like, okay, so it's kind of like the Marvel opening. It is kind for, of like uh, the kind Marvel of the same, opening, uh, um, the same uh, idea, but it's going to be all their uh, their horror properties, which I thought was kind of yeah. funny. Like that's that's yeah. their new uh, like, hey, we got all this cool yeah. stuff. This is who we are, right? Right. Yeah. There's the invisible woman that you can't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> she's in the whole movie <laughs> so a little background on the story so this was adapted from a short story in 2004 by joe hill that is not surprising because there's about as much plot that could fill a short story but so now we're, <laughs> gonna, we're gonna stretch it to fill an hour and a half movie that's what i'm about to tell you so it's 30 <laughs> pages i mean it's a very short story sure and it's a quick story about a kid that gets kidnapped and then he doesn't know how to get out. He's being starved by this grabber, very similar type. Was of... this a spec script for Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because that's totally what that uh, half hour version. <laughs> well, could I, have I, yeah, I couldn't tell you on that one. But, you know, it's a very similar story. But there's no sister except for a mention of her and to say that she sometimes has dreams that are really visions. And then he's visited by uh, he's called and I think only talks to one of the kids and then ends up getting out in a similar fashion. And so it's a really quick just like. You're abducted. Why is there a phone ring that's unplugged? Oh, I'm one of the kids that was kidnapped earlier is talking to me, and then I'm going to take out the bad guy at the end. Like, very gotcha. quick. So they had to take 30 pages and expand it into, I think, an hour and 47-minute film. So they do a lot of uh, – they expand the daughter character, which I thought she was great. She was getting laughs Man, she, throughout the entire when – she, When she snaps – not snaps, but, like, when she's had enough of people's there's, crap. Well, yeah. There's two times. Yeah. When she talks to the cops, Yeah, that yeah. was laugh out loud. <laughs> the entire theater, including myself, I thought that was hilarious the way she was talking to them. And then when she beats up the kids <laughs> to defend her brother. When she hits that kid with the brick. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Oh, I, those, yeah. That was – Those were oof. some good moments. So I, I have to say I really did like her. She's – Madeline McGraw is the actor's name – who plays Gwen and Mason Thames, who plays Finney, who I also thought was really good. This is his first movie. Yeah, I was, so. I was looking at his stuff. I was like, I thought I had seen him before, but I yeah, he, I, th- I thought he was really good. They expand on the the sister character. She's just a footnote, and she's three years older in the short story, I believe. And they make her younger in this one. Um, the whole stuff about getting beat up school. I mean, that is all new for this film. So yeah. that all fleshes out the character and, and, and gives him that character arc. Like Ryan says at the end, which I know didn't necessarily work for him, but I liked it. I, I thought it was really cool to see the kid grow and to get strength and something about the past, like uh, the, the other kids that were hurt and didn't make it out, like them influencing him, like each one had done something. I think like Tom touched upon each one of them set up something, you know, like with the wire or digging and were able to help him. And he was able to get out of there and, and at least end it. So no one else could get hurt. There was right. just something about that. Yeah. I, I really liked the, the payoff of all these things that he had done that yeah. he didn't think had worked yeah. when, when, together when, when meshed together they all 
you know, yeah. I don't the, rem- the refrigerator that led nowhere ends yeah. up paying. The arm is and... mint. That I liked that. That was probably the yeah that that's got the element that I thought up. was set up the best because yeah. it's it's it was very organic. It didn't feel like a plot device, and so that's one of the times in the film. Wow, that yeah. works so well because you set it up very early on, but you didn't draw attention you to the setup. The you're not right. you're not saying you we're setting you up for something right. later. And so I thought that worked really well. And I really enjoyed uh, the moment. And, and I liked the showdown. I, I don't much care for most of the setup of the movie, sure. but I, I do, I do like the showdown. And I think it works very well. The, the pacing uh, work uh, works well once we get into the third act, but, but that's the moment that I, that I enjoyed the most from a storytelling perspective. That was like, I was at a Friday night showing of this and it was actually pretty much almost full and which makes sense with that 20, $25 million box office. Yeah, because I saw it on Thursday and we were the only people in the theater. I saw it last night and it was packed. Yeah, I think, you know, Friday, Saturday for horror movies, people turn up for those. It's also been a bit since we've had a horror movie, right? I don't know, Ryan, what's the last horror movie? You would know. That regular people would have heard of. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That got released in theaters. Yes. Oh, uh, let's see. We had Scream in January, oh, and then we Scream had... That's six months ago at this point. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Men, I guess, uh, uh, which did end up... Another A24, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you've but got more that. more art house horror, have, not something um, that the teenagers are going to seek out. Yeah. Oh, something yeah. that teenagers Probably are going to seek out. Probably Scream, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, for, for, a ma- for a fairly mainstream horror movie, I think it's probably Scream. So it's been six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, unless you count... Uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, into the horror verse as uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Into um, so, people got tricked into no, that. No, I. It's oh, oh. Well, okay. I'll tell you. Okay, this is it's, it's an art house film, but it's really great. And so I, I want to mention it because I want people to go out and find this film because I thought it was fantastic. Hatching. I absolutely loved Hatching. Uh, it's the. Is it, Swedish? I think there it's it a is. Swedish horror film. It sounds and like I, you're confessing to some sort of fetish I've never heard of. <laughs> I love hatching. Have you done oh, that? <laughs> no, but that was, that's the last horror film that uh, I, re- uh, I I think it's the last one I saw and definitely the last one that, uh, that I reviewed. Uh, but no, no, hatching, it's um, a great practical effects. There's some things that don't work in the film, but you're going to absolutely love the puppetry that was my that was my favorite part. But no, in terms of general audiences, I would say Scream is probably the last yeah. one. But I mean, there's been others. I think we're thinking more like the big studio, like studio horror films, I mean, yeah. which Blumhouse. I mean, there there's one called Dash Cam that came out. Crimes of the Future, you may be able to say oh, as a that's horror. Oh, it. Crimes of the Future. Uh, yeah. I just don't there's feel like there's been any like kind of wide release. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, know. we're I just for listeners, I mean, there are horror movies. We're sure. talking about like Scream or, you know, like the big mm-hmm. ones that are studio films. Right. Doesn't diminish the other one's qualities but just what are general audiences going to turn up for and yeah. pay 30 hatching, million dollars hatching was never going to open to 25 million <laughs> exactly right like, there's no, no version of events <laughs> where, that's true. where that not that it place. maybe doesn't deserve sure, it but totally. it's, it just doesn't have that kind of a push it's not the so, business no. model on a no. movie i think but, the last one with any kind of cachet is maybe you could argue crimes of the future but i, I think it is that's still very so it's, been, it, it's been six you know, six months. Yeah, this we, is Universal uh, Blumhouse, yeah. so putting yeah. the money behind the marketing for it. But yeah, has we, he has he have they attached e- to each other? Like, is this kind of the new? Well, thing? He had a deal with them. That's, That's what why I he's done did. all Ta- these. Do they know how many are left by chance? I don't know. I don't know when the deal goes through, but they years back signed a deal that he would do whatever. That's why he got yeah. the. Invisible and Black Phone is going to be one of the uh, houses at Halloween Horror Nights this year. It's oh, uh, 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 Blumhouse cool. is uh, Black Phone and Freaky. So they're putting oh. they're putting those together for uh, cool. one of the houses this upcoming HHN. I That's like fun. that. So Finney and his sister Gwen are they they don't have the best life, right? Like their dad uh, initially, I thought that they were going to play into like maybe he had some PTSD thing because like on the front of the paper they're talking about how mm. like military benefits are running out. Mm. So like they don't make any a lot of noise around the dad. That's was the like, arc I didn't like. That's the one that fell flat for me because they the have this abu- they have this abusive father that's awful. Yeah, one of his kids get kidnapped, and then basically he comes back and he's like, "Oh, I'm better now. I love you." Because right. you know, what well, I mean? like, that's, okay, so that's uh, well, it didn't work for me. It that's was a little no, 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 no. I, it, I, I, I agree. I, I feel like he d- he doesn't get a pass because the, the dad. I mean, because yeah. I feel like going forward. Right. 
things aren't going to change. He right. is he's happy that he found his son in that moment. Yeah, but where was the growth that would actually yeah, cause right. him not to realize? It was a little simplistic. Oh, if they I wanted see. us to feel like, oh, this dad has seen the value of his children. But I don't think that he has. I think he's just happy that his son is home and then come tomorrow we're going right back into that same but Finney is now a different kid. So that is I, then we I, that's a whole seen, different move. I agree. should have seen a moment of that where the, I agree. where the dad maybe grabs him by the scarf for the and neck, he, like where where how'd you let this something. happen to you? And he's like, Hey, because this right. movie has a happy ending. They're right. showing you that the dad is now better. Yes. And so that was cheap to me because we don't know why he's the way he is, other right. than he lost his wife. Well, but, no, I I assume that he's just I mean, we don't need to know why he's a drunk. He's a drunk. Like that's the long or short of it okay but then we didn't see him give up alcohol or anything Why? that's true we didn't I'm, see I'm any just of that. saying there's no if, if you're gonna have a character act that awful i think you need to show why they're that awful to at least justify not As, that it's right but why is he drinking especially because so they what showed is... him acting that right it wasn't yeah. like oh dad beats me and it ha- but it happens off camera they showed the right a, a severe yeah. beating and they never got and there was no redemption moment like you said if the kid then beats up the dad and puts him in this place says you're not going to do this to us anymore then you get that moment but we got to see him beat the crap out of his kids and then one kid disappears one kid shows back up and he's nice well yeah. that no that's not sufficient that's, for right right so i guess i i for i hear you well and how I, is uh how is he in the short in the in the short story version i know you said there's no it's uh the, the uh, in the short story he has a mom and a dad i think they okay. just recently got divorced so the mother's not okay. dead but no you just like see him for a, a uh, before school and oh we should also say that joe hill is stephen king's son Oh yeah, you, you know, know like yeah. that's that's kind of a and that does kind of have a Stephen King feel to his it stories. Do I like his books? I've I read do too. Quite a few of them, and and uh, it's funny because Nosferatu, the, the Tall Grass. Yeah, he wrote what a else? book. He called, did a bunch of comics too. He wrote a book called The Fireman, which I liked a lot. Okay. And uh, and I remember reading that book and being like, it was. I just bought it because it was on sale on Kindle for like two bucks, and I was yeah. like, oh, okay, this sounds interesting. And I'm like halfway through, and I was like. I'm like, this feels like a Stephen King <laughs> book, but I'm not, but I'm not mad at it, right? Yeah, like, I'm right. not like, what? This is low grade Stephen King. I feel like this reminds me of something Stephen King would have written, but it like, but it, but it's also good. Like, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it. I, and uh, and then I looked it up, and I was like, oh, this dude's his kid. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I had no, he wrote, had no he wrote idea. Lock and Key, which got picked yeah, up by Netflix. A, yep. yeah. He's done a lot, a lot of TV adaptations yeah. now. So he wrote a really good short story. I can't remember the name of it, but it's about this guy finds a guy who. Uh, has like this rich guy and he's taking all these like super rich people. He has this like special entrance closet that he's discovered that basically takes them into a world like Narnia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it also go to an island in which there's actually a a group of scientists that are uh, uh, sucking the lives out of people and studying them as they age? Is is this uh, closet also also go there? It does not. It does not. (laughs) But what's great is that I love I love the this isn't the this is one of the twists, but it is that is that they're doing what rich people would do if they found Narnia. They're hunting the creatures. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like they're going in and killing like the fawns and like all the and so it's and it was just like, well that's kind of disgusting. I love it. Yeah. So if you want to read this book, this short story is a part of a collection called 20th Century Ghosts and I looked it up and it seems like they've now uh, rebranded it and and published it again as the Black Phone Stories uh, to get the, the marketing yeah, yeah. together. Uh. But there's like four or five stories. It's uh, I think it was 8.99 or 9.99 on Kindle. I think some of his dad's best work was in short, short story stories. form. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. like that some of his best stuff is in short stories. I liked the short story, but I, it just again it's it's very it's very short. I mean, no way getting around it. And I, I, I think the film did a great job. This is uh, Scott Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill, who yeah. is his guy from Sinister, Sinister and Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. Yeah. They've worked together. So uh, they're kind of a duo. And this is uh, reteaming Ethan Hawke with Scott Derrickson since Sinister. And I think they do a great job uh, as, as a team. I mean, I think all mm-hmm. this stuff is really, really works together with the visuals and and uh, we'll get into Ethan Hawke's performance. Yeah, so yeah, so our two characters, they don't have the best life and Finn is very timid. Not that timid's not the best word, just he's just an awkward kid and mm-hmm. he's like of the age where it's okay to be awkward. I was going to say, yeah, I mean is this around the age when you grew up in like in school? Yeah, so th- this kid's probably about I would I'm, say he's 13, 14. Yeah, so she's 
ten. Yeah, right? I'm closer to her age. So this was what seventy eight. Seventy oh, seventy seven? seventy eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I so I would have been like two years younger than. It is than this weird girl. they're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is like seventy four. Yeah, seventy eight is what it says. So like they yeah. would be talking about Halloween, which I just thought was like just one of those things where I was like. How is this? Uh, this okay. Well, Halloween came out. Well, when? This must have come out. Uh, could, I guess just, this maybe this came out just before. That's Halloween. That's possible. Yeah, Halloween yeah. is Halloween, no, 1970. Right, so it yeah. wouldn't be yeah, out yet. I guess that's true. They yeah. also wouldn't have a way to see it because it's R. That's fair. And that's movies, fair. movies play in theaters for years, and right? Then, and so, seventy-four to seventy-eight. I guess you so. Could, t- you Texas could make that. Chainsaw Massacre is probably just coming up on the radar of pre- of the tween yeah, world. Yeah, that's probably true. Probably still at drive-ins. And, well, I think that's what that kid says. Like, yeah. he took me to the drive-in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but but no, like I, I this is definitely the time frame I grew up in. I would have been eight years old at the time this movie is set. And so like, I was going to say is totally what it looked like. I, I don't think I would survive. Like I, it, <laughs> I'm it a was, lot tougher than you guys give me credit. For. I mean, seriously pretty... though, that in movies, whenever you go back to this time period, kids are beating the crap out of each other. And then they just go to class with bloody lips and black eyes. Yeah. I'm like, Holy Oh, well crap. I it just, there's <laughs> things are so different today where if you even insult someone, like not even that much, or if you push someone like you are out of there, I think and these are... kids are, Beating the crap. Like, yeah, in the okay. 70s, if you got bullied, they were like, have you thought about not being weird? <laughs> yeah. It, have you like, thought about punching them in the right. mouth? Yeah. And, and so <laughs> I just, I was I was thinking of you, Tom, when I was thinking, like, God, did Tom grow up in this day and age? And I have to ask how on earth you survived yeah, that. My my daughter had a... I got in a lot of fights when I was a kid. Yeah. A lot I, of we, fights. we used to fight all the time. Yeah. Uh, my daughter had a, a, a run-in with, a, with another student. Uh, and I told the teacher, this has been a thing. And I was like, I told that we had to have a Zoom call with the teacher and the principal. I was like, I'm going to tell you right now, if he does it again, I've given her the green light to knock him out. Yeah. And the teacher was like, well, I can't. I was like, I don't care what you say. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's going to punch that kid in the face. And she'll I don't care. She'll be in trouble care. at school. She'll be a hero <laughs> at home. And to, right, and to your point, Joe, I, I, think that, I think that's very valuable. Um, I don't want to go off on some philosophical esoteric tangent, but I, I think it is in, is important to be able to stand up and um, and defend yourself yeah. and uh, you know uh, in a very physical manner because it, it it does build character it can be abused and taken too right. far but but it also uh, it does build strength and, and, and I and I think you know I think many kids uh, forget that they can be strong okay okay and so, Ryan so I, I I like that I appreciate everything that you're saying but I also want you to recognize. That you said in the beginning of this podcast that his growth, <laughs> yeah. like doesn't you know, it isn't shown in this movie. And you just, and you just described, just described the entire exactly plot of the movie. what this kid did. By <laughs> he went from being weak to standing That's up for a, himself. It's, it's instinct, though. Instinct isn't growth. not everybody. I, see, that I, instinct, I, I, I will respectfully disagree with that. Is that yeah. I mean, sometimes you don't have that instinct, and even within this movie, right? I mean, we see him getting the. Sh- kicked out of him and that There's instinct, no instinct yeah. that instinct didn't kick in there and, and so even when the, you're the about kids, to be murdered that's <laughs> much <laughs> different that, that, beating, murdered, that you know? beating looked like he was about yeah. to get the murdered second, the second beating the first one doesn't look as bad because yeah. the the kid no oh yeah the first one's not as bad that's the second one where they beat up on the sister and, yeah oh yeah. man there, that was yeah. but that was I, rough but like i will say like growing up in this time here i did things when i was a kid yep that if if i was do if i had done it today as a child <laughs> Like I would be in some sort of special school or get an <laughs> IEP or something. Like I like I legit <laughs> once chased a kid around a classroom with a pair of scissors. Oh, and yeah. and because he would torment me, he just constantly like just bullied me. And it was like the the teacher we were putting art supplies on the desk, and the and it was me and this kid. His name's Joey Gadisi. I still remember the. <laughs> Sucker's name and and we're, and we're yeah. walking Joe's around and, and, the, and my job different. was to put the glue on the desk and his job was to put the scissors on the desk and and he like just kept like just mocking. I was a short kid. I mean a short adult, but uh, <laughs> but and it was and then finally I was like and like second grade. I grabbed a pair of scissors and I'm like, that's it, mother. <laughs> <laughs> and and like for real i talk like that when i was in the second grade and and i just took off after him and he st- and like and then i remember them taking me the to the office and like now tommy what would you have done if you had caught him I'm like i'd have stabbed him like i had to look, that's what i'd have done i'm like i'm, I'm sick of this kid. what what don't what part don't you rec- realize yeah teacher lady i don't even know if they called my parents 
Like, yeah, go, back to cl- like, go back to class. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can tell. I mean, that's why I think watching it today, some kids may think it's a little bit unbelievable because yeah. they don't understand the times. Because it different. feels over the top, like you're, but, like you're stacking the deck right. in favor of your character. Right. But them, it's like yeah. for real, and you see it in all the movies that take place in this time period. Kids beat the crap out of each if, other, and then they just walk home. If you see it in movies in made in that time period about that time period, right. it, that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? sure, sure. So, yeah, what you guys my remember? bodyguard. Have you ever seen the movie My Bodyguard? Is that the one that was like the re- kind of the Christopher Makepeace, Adam Baldwin. But didn't they kind of remake that with Owen Wilson? Oh, they did. But right? go see. But see My Bodyguard. Okay, really good. Bit Taylor is that what yes. it's supposed to be a remake? Yes, is that what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, but it, so five kids have been abducted before the grabber gets to Finney, and you see throughout the film different flashbacks but the one that kind of opens the film is the kid is getting picked on by three bullies and this i would call him a friend you know he's like kind of a cool tough kid I mean, at school. he's definitely a friend like yeah they, yeah i mean it's like they don't seem like they're super tight yeah like, i don't think they the, hang out but the but that kid likes him exactly it's yeah. kind of weird because it's not like you know in these school movies you see the kids at the locker and their buddies and whatever like this kid's cool but he also like respects finney finney helps him with his homework and studying so they have this cool understanding and so this kid like takes on these other bo- well, well he, he well, beats he, the he, crap he, out of a guy out of a guy they call like moose or whale yeah. or something i mean moose and, was being very insulting to this oh kid. yeah he used he dropped a couple uh, words that are inappropriate and not okay, yeah, and, and then this kid let him Robin know. Robin turned around and blasted him in the face. Yeah. So, so when, so when these bullies are picking on Finny, <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of this movie. First, we should say that like Billy, it, Billy, um, Finn is like a pitcher, and there's this classic kind of '70s baseball game, and he he's got the the kid who's like the top kid, or you know, I will do kind of a bit of a problem naming the Asian kid Bruce. Like, that's a little on the nose, especially when they reference Bruce Lee later. Yeah. Um, well, that kid would have been named that before anybody knew who Bruce Lee was. No. Most likely. When did yeah. the Dragon come out? No. I know the Dragon's the American. These, I, I'm assuming that these... But that's like the 70s. I guess that's true. And but this still, kid's like, look like he's about 14 yeah. in 77. But still, you're, as a writer, maybe yeah. don't name the kid totally. Bruce. Yeah. Uh, but he, anyway, he, he stri- he's got him down 0-2. First thing I thought is that kid's got a batting glove Stephen, on. Stephen, Joe Hill named him Bruce, just so you know. Okay. Not these writers. It's uh, that Bruce is in the, he's the main guy in the short story. Just though. out of curiosity, oh, okay. is he Asian? Or was it was just, just, they just happened uh, to catch I think in the Asian. short story his name was Bruce Yamada or whatever. Oh, okay. Right. I, I do think he was in the short story. Well, then I'll, all right. But like, so he's got, first thing I noticed is the kid's got a batting glove on. And I was like, man, nobody wore batting gloves in the 70s. And then I'm sitting there in the theater. I was like, oh, 1964. All right. Never mind. Take a break. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he the, the, he's fight the Robin, who is this kid's friend, is fighting uh, Moose or whatever. And I do like in the bathroom when he scares the three bullies away from Finn. And the kid just walks in, takes some like paper towels out and just duct tapes his hand. Yeah. And I was like, that's bad. <laughs> I was like, that's such the it's kid- such a simple thing. But it was no, freaking cool the kid is written very cool and again it's he was standing up for himself which is the whole growth of finn throughout this movie you see this character that does it and then he's like oh man i'm gonna be bleeding all first <laughs> all period day. or whatever like <laughs> it's, it is really hand. matter yeah. of fact and funny the, the writing in this movie i think in which i think uh c robert cargill is responsible for a lot of those flourishes yeah. those really interesting and funny flourishes and I, I really like this character, but so you've got this badass character. But the point I was trying to make is that even he got killed by the grabber, right? right. So yeah. you're saying instinct and why can't you defend yourself? They showed you purposefully even a badass kid can get killed by the grabber. Right. It took the help of all the kids that would go to influence him in the supernatural manner and for Finn to be able to accept what he had to do and to be able to stand up for himself. So it isn't always just enough because even badasses get killed. Even badasses get kidnapped, right? Right. So I think that maybe, Ryan, respectfully, maybe you're not giving enough credit to the story and what it's doing because it isn't always that simple. You know, it, it is, is just stand up for yourself. And so I liked the growth and I thought it had a really good message at the end of the day. Uh, and that moment was like, it was like the Avengers were coming through the portals in Endgame. <laughs> and the entire theater erupted with that callback to the to the mint arm. Yeah, the thing. mint arm is a and, good and, I mean, callback. it was a bad ass you know, yeah. to spoil it. And if you don't think this kid's getting out and the bad Don't guys, worry. <laughs> it's, it's a movie about kidnapping a kid that's, you know. Right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so sorry. Go on with the. Uh, yeah, so they, 
your their life you know they you have this thing this this grabber going on in the background and i thought the way they sh- don't show you him initially is insanely scary like yep. you when you see robin who looks like he's walking like on the back side of like a mall mm-hmm. is kind of what he looks yeah, like yeah like behind stores in a strip mall yeah the, you yeah. see the black van in the distance and you see this figure get out and it's like he's got the top hat and he's you but can't worried right right the you, but you can, you can kind blurred. of see like you can make things like top hat like cape and a co- you know like a th- like a collar yeah uh, and like a magician exactly yeah. like a like, magician uh, yeah yeah which is in this this is what he uses so in the short story uh they call him the fat man his name's al but but he's very overweight he's supposed to be a john wayne gacy ah, type and ah, so gotcha. he's a fat clown is how they describe him and derrickson didn't want to do that obviously i think it kind of makes it prob- more problematic it uh with it they didn't want to, you know it was sure. just very popular they don't want to make the villain a clown and he wanted to use ethan hawk who is in good shape so well yeah and also he's got a relationship with ethan hawk from yeah. sinister and also well, that's right. just become such a trope at this point yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, i like that they change it and i will say i think this is a great mask when you have a horror, multiple masks when you, Right. But yeah. when you have a horror movie and you have to sell it based on the killer, like what is the scary thing that gets people? And I know we're saying it's not really a true horror movie. Yeah. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's it's misleading to just say this is straight horror. Yeah. But the way they're marketing it to get people into seats, obviously they're wanting to show up for a scary movie. And so you've got all the great horror masks and, and villains. And I think just from a marketing perspective, I didn't watch the trailer or anything, but when I saw a still of him in that mask, yep. instantly would want to see that movie. Even if we weren't reviewing it, I'm like, that is a great it's, it mask. Is. No, it's, a, it's a great mask. And he uh, changes it throughout the film. And so I, yeah. uh, the, the changes that I think work um, uh, very well are when we go from the, the happy face to the sad face, mm-hmm. uh, whether or not we've got like the top part of the mask on that didn't uh, do anything for me either way. But what I, what I, what, what, where the mask really worked is when the, it's the, the expression of, of the face, the smiling or the frowning. And we, and we, and we changed that out. And I, and I thought that worked very well and was, uh, uh seriously creepy. Yeah. yeah and, I, and with his eyes, Ethan well, that's, Hawk, that's the bottom line, right? Is he, you get to see, you, you get, you get an actor as good as Ethan Hawke is, yeah. and then when you cover him up with a mask, you kind of lose the the point of hiring right. Ethan Hawke. With this one, like the you mask were, is so you good. can take the the top of the mask off, and you can see he can emote with his eyes. He yeah. can take mm-hmm. the bottom of the mask mm-hmm. off, and he can so like it's like so we should say it's like a detachable mask where you yeah. can it's two parts interchange split, inter- so. interchange the tops or the yeah. bottoms and do a different stuff. The way that they use that incredible, I think just. This is one of my favorite horror masks. I think it's, it's a good the, one. The design of it is so good and matched with Ethan Hawke. Not only his expressive eyes and the way he acts with, with his facial features, but his body language. Mm-hmm. He's so creepy in the way that he moves his hands. It's almost and, like each mask is a different personality. Kind of. Yeah. And he's so soft-spoken, but yet so creepy in the way his portrayal is. Um, but going back to that Robin thing when he's behind the strip mall or whatever, I almost thought he was in on it because to me it looked like he was walking towards him. Like I was confused at first. Yeah. You know, he was just because yeah. he, he was looked like he was purposefully walking towards the grabber where the grabber usually is snatching kids and tricking them into his van. And Robin's just walking to him. So, I mean, I think they clear it up pretty quickly. But in the back of my mind, the way it was filmed. Even though it was eerie, I was kind of like, oh, is he doing something with... Yeah, I, there was another moment in the film where I was confused, and that was when later when we see the brother, yeah, the, who we know, we don't know he's the brother yet, and he's just trying to solve the murder. Which I think is great. Yeah. That, I, so that guy it, was in It. Okay. He played um, the older version of the kid with like the... Who was like a hypochondriac. It's Max is the character name. Okay. He was really funny. But, like, but then the camera pans down... And you see the flooring, and then you, you and then you, they go to the kid in the basement. Yeah, and I was just like, I was, I even said to my wife, and I was like, "Are they telling us they're in the same house, or is that just a creative scene transition?" Oh. I like, I honestly didn't know yeah. what they were trying to convey. Yeah, I thought like, did they get cutesy, or are they telling us this kid's in the same? I house? I didn't know at the time either. Yeah, I, I think that you are supposed to think they're in the same house, but it looked from what we know in other movies, that it's like, oh, a top floor to a bottom floor. Right. It looked like it could have been cutesy. Yeah. Well, well, because it's, cutesy. it's uh, well, they're across the street from one another, so while it may not be the exact same house, it's it connected. is. Oh, I mean, no, no, no. Across no, the street no. from one no, another. The, 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 house, the house across the street is where it's the kids empty. are buried. It's where they're buried. Yeah. 
Uh, that's house, empty. The, the house that, uh, that Max and Ethan Hawke yeah. and Finn are in are all in one house yeah. on that's the other side of the street. Because the cops break in and it's it's vacated. Right. So they're, yeah, they would a have a Science college. of the Lambs moment. Yeah, yeah, very so, much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that, again, with the filming of this movie, it is very creepy. I think they were creative with some of those transitions that really work. But yeah, I, I do like that they show you all these kids and all their strengths, and then you get to Finney, who doesn't really have that, and it's very similar in the short story to how he gets captured. And in this movie, the the grabber is, he says he's a magician, and he's got black balloons in the back of his van right. and shoves him in there. Like um, the Goo Goo Dolls. Like the Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> what I like... It, Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the trailer, at least I've seen stills. Don't you see Ethan Hawke's whole face without a mask on, just like white paint? Kind of. So you do see that here. So it, it it's, it's always it's, blurred it's, out. No, it's really fast. So when okay. Finn on Friday nights, Gwen goes to her friend's house for the for spend the night. Finn goes home to take care of the dad. On the when Finn is taken, he is walking mm-hmm. uh, home and he runs into the Ethan Hawke and he where they. I don't know if they bump into each other or if like he just drops everything. And the hat goes like skidding across, mm-hmm. and it's super fast. But you can see mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke's face, but that's very but that, briefly in the white makeup. But yeah, but that's what, no, that's what I'm saying though. So in the movie, it's so fast, and then the rest of it is from behind, and you don't see him, which I think ramps up the tension yeah. and the horror. In the trailer or whatever stills I've seen online, you see like clear shot of his face to where it seemed more. So I didn't watch the trailer. I don't know if there's more of that in the trailer. I did watch the trailer, but I'm glad they hide his face because I think it makes it so much creepier because you don't know exactly what you're dealing with here. Yeah, and I I love the way that it's filmed from behind him and it's it's blurry like they show, in shadows. They show him in the background. It, it's a really good job of filming it. And so I didn't know if that was a decision afterwards to hide the face or not. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think once you show the advantage this movie has is there is no quote unquote big name actor, right? And then when you show so that to me that gives you like a an aura of realism mm-hmm. and as soon as you see Ethan Hawke, right. you're just kind of like, well, okay, now we're in he's a movie star, right? Yeah. Like I think so it's the fact that you hide, don't see yeah. him until the very end, like you don't see his face and you barely I mean and again, at the very end, you barely see his face yeah. there too. Like he's all bloody and kind yeah, of covered he, up. And he's making a big crazy face, and then you don't see it at all after yeah. that. I think it helps because in your mind, you're like, "Is this guy messed up? Is he deformed? What does he look like?" Like yeah. you're just like guessing. What is this creepy? Who who that could do all this? What does he look like? Yeah. And what's even scarier in the end, like with most real killers, totally it's normal. Like, they're a normal and they look like a normal <laughs> person, which is even scarier that they're your neighbor. They're your you know they're just yeah. Finn gets taken, grabbed. Yeah. The daughter or the sister is like, you know, I, she's, I agree with you. She's pretty great where she has these dreams and she's praying to Jesus. Like, come on, like, give me something. Yeah. And That's hilarious with her praying. She was like, are you f- like, yeah. you know, finally when she's not, she wakes up one day and she hasn't had a dream and she was like, you mother, like she, uh, yeah. her, her mouth is hilarious. Her, like, the lines are hilarious that they wrote for her. She, and she's so funny. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, Finn is in the basement and he hears the phone ringing uh, and he picks it up. And of course there's nothing there the next day it rings again. And he, it's the, it's one kid and he's like, look, Oh, they leave the door. Is that what it is? They leave the door open. Mm-hmm. And he says, mm. don't go upstairs. And the kid was like, why? I think he's, it's Bruce first. Is that who it is? Mm. No, it's the paper. Bo- oh no, maybe no. you're right. Paper it is, boy. It is, yeah. You, it's you, a, it's a paper boy. No, yeah. Cause Bruce he says, first. he says starts he got with Bruce with the mint arm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh. Cause he knows him. He's like, but, he goes, yeah, I know you, Bruce. I don't know. I don't remember my yeah, name. Yeah, it's, it's the, the first, first thing, thing you goes. lose. Yeah. And he's like, mm. when you lose, what? He's like, you know. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay. So, but so all of these kids that have been taken are have left pieces of their plan, right? So I think it's like an escape Bruce, room, basically. Each kind of solved yeah. one puzzle. Like to... Bruce tells him to go to a floorboard, pull up the floorboard, and start digging, and like just start digging a hole. And, and he t- didn't. Get, he didn't finish it before he got killed. And I was like. Well, if you flush that down the toilet, like you're just going to clog the toilet. You can't flush dirt down a toilet. So that's step one. Step two is the paper boy. Like like we just said, who said I, I pulled a cord off of the wall and I hit it here. So now he's got I will is that say what they didn't Shawshank. Did he when he was digging the tunnel? Did he flush the dirt? I th- think that's a think Stephen so. kill. I oh, think that, yeah. Stephen Maybe King. that was a little callback. That was OK. OK. okay. Yeah. I will say when he when he takes the carpet. Uh, and starts shimmying the the cord up the carpet. I was like, that wouldn't work. No yeah, no. Was get, like, that was, was like, <clears throat> that was actually. I'm glad you mentioned because I forgot it. That was the most unbelievable thing in this movie. <laughs> that wire wasn't tight enough to be stiff enough yeah, to go up the thing. Like 
right. Because when it goes up, it it flops down and around. So I'm like, that wouldn't work. Uh, maybe the rope was excited for the sunlight, and so it was able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like the and and, and if it were a, a a tube, like a small tube, you could direct it up. It but the carpet inside was a a large opening where the cord would get bundled up in it. Like it just the physics don't work out of how. It was. So yeah, so that's the first the second kid, and then the third kid. Does he give like the bike lock number? I think yes. so. Yeah, and the then, uh, the combination etched into uh, etched into the wall. Yeah. Right, that's right. And then one kid, another kid says he's he's got the uh, Ethan Hawke leaves the door open on axe on purpose yeah. to see if the kid will see if Finn will come walking upstairs. And the kid's like, "Do not go upstairs. If you don't go upstairs, you you can't play the game. If you can't play the game, you can't lose, mm. or he can't win. That's what he says. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> The grabber, the guy can't win the game if you don't play it. Like the grabber, obviously you're to insinuate because we don't get a backstory on him. We don't see why he acts this way, but he is really, really nice to the kids. Like we see with Finn is the only one we actually see. But then when they act bad, he calls them naughty boy. It's a game he plays. So right. whatever it is, he gets off on the kids being bad and punishing them, which eventually leads to their death. Yes. But Finn doesn't do anything. And if he ever is almost going to do what the grabber deems naughty boy, the kids call him on the phone say, and say, hey, don't, don't do that. And tell him how to get around it right and there was something it was really interesting watching this movie about this concept of the kids that had been hurt before by this same killer that helping him i don't know it, it, it seems just, very it, original but do me. you think that the previous kids to robin weren't calling him too like don't i don't know if well, see that's what i that's what i said and i and then that's where you, there's years of kids or if not years at least months they didn't right. at they, least months if not years they, of kids and they don't Talk and I think now. they, I they think, say that in the story, though, if you it, didn't catch it. They they said, we did call. He goes, why? He mm. says, why didn't you call them or whatever? And they said, we did. They didn't hear it. You're the first he's one the to hear He's the only one us. that can hear it because of his supernatural mm. powers that he and the sister have. Oh, my God. He's a, he's, he's Danny. Yeah. He's got the but shine. But they do say that. They said, we all called. They oh, said, yeah. we did. You're the first one to hear it. So there is that supernatural explanation happening. It's and also, all the kids but are then if trying. that's true, then... then then the grabber has it too. Well, and so the grabber says, I haven't heard that since I was a kid. And I think that and in that's... The Shining, they say, as you get older, the shine starts to go away. So maybe there is, because he heard it when he was a kid, and that basement has that mattress, it has a bathroom in it. I think this dude was messed up when he was a kid, and I think that was maybe his room. I'm just, I'm trying to write a backstory. Right. I don't think I need it for the story to work, but I'm thinking, like, why is this Black guy messed too. up? But I'm thinking, I, I, that kid was probably locked in the yeah. basement. That was his messed up because why else would he hear that phone when he was a kid? I'm thinking, oh, it he is interesting that Scott prequel, Derrickson, like, he got yeah, help. Black yeah. Telegram. Yeah. <laughs> black Telefax. Well, that phone's probably old <laughs> enough to where that would still be the phone that <laughs> yeah. was down there. In their first. Cargill and Derrickson in their first go around is also very centered around kids. Mm-hmm. Like Sinister is a very kid centric movie where Bagul, who is also a great look, like the, the mm-hmm. villain is whatever, but it's a great look for a, a monster is is taking like children and make, bringing them into the, into his little. Yeah, army. I was thinking about that. I'm like, that's interesting that Derrickson and Cargill wrote that first script, and it's about like these kids and mm-hmm. and there's murders and some he takes kids. one kid from a family and that kid murders the entire family yeah and, and then that kid becomes part of the and then i'm like army. oh that's interesting i'm just wondering like what is the fascination here i think kids child? are creepy that's what yeah. it's like well <laughs> and he said in an interview derrickson said well maybe it was blumhouse there was an interview with lots interviewing lots yeah. of them and one of them i think blumhouse in this part said a lot of horror movies use kids because they're innocent until they're influenced in a certain way so like you empathize with them because they're children, but too like they're moldable to where you see these kids that start off so innocent and pure. And then you've got the punk bully kids, but they've been taught by their parents or abused or whatever. And you see how they've been influenced. Like no one's bad until some other outside sure. influence is on them. And so you also feel bad and for the kids. Cause it's like, well, they're just kids. Like you don't want anything to happen to them. Like the good kids, I like, the, bully kids you're not as but for the for the other kids like they're the main character because you want them to get out you want them to have a life and all that um so a lot of horror movies you're right joe they do purposefully use children as creepy yeah yeah it's also interesting i i do want to point out tom savini is did the special effects for this oh really yeah uh he was the he i guess he's the owner of uh he's got his own studio okay and they his studio did all the the stuff. So I was like seeing oh, nice. the promotional material, and I was nice. like, "Why is 
why is Tom Savini like part of these interview processes? And I was like, oh, because there and there are some makeup effects. Like he he could have designed the ma- the mask. There's a giant. There's an axe. To there's the an head. axe to the head, which yeah. is right up Savini's alley. Like that's yeah. kind of his jam. Okay. Uh, but I was like, oh, cool. Good to see him still doing a little like real hands on work. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, I was really glad they didn't make this a PG thirteen movie. Uh, it was yeah. close. I mean, like, if you take that one scene out... Oh, no, there's lots of F-bombs. I guess that's true. There's, I mean, there's, and yeah, there's some pretty gr- graphic violence. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's good they didn't, just, just for the box office. Yeah. You know, they, they leaned into the rated R movie, which did, I think, make it more impactful. And Blumhouse is, not, you know, he's he's got a bunch of PG-13, you know, Freaky and all that stuff is all PG-13 right. and stuff, which is good. Like They're it's, working on know, a third one, he says. I don't blame him. So. Like, those make a third Freaky movie? Yeah, that's the one. There's two, right? Or no, uh, no happy, like, happy, like happy, birth, happy, happy Death Day. The, yeah, the yeah. Happy Death Day 3 yeah. he's working on. Okay. Because that's a PG-13. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 And that one, that first one did really well. Yeah. I really like the first one. The oh. second one, eh, whatever. But yeah. I really <laughs> right. enjoyed the... Uh, that the first one first was a blast. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Uh, so he's getting all these different pointers from all these different kids. And meanwhile, working on all these different escape routes, getting a wire off the wall. Uh, Pulling off the, the grate on the mirror, digging the hole, opening the man, back of that... The back of those, the toilet tank, the top, are so heavy. I'm like, use that yeah. <laughs> when it comes down to give you breakfast. Yeah. And his hands are full with a tray. Yeah. I'm not, you know, whatever. He's a kid and he's in this horrible situation. But in my, but you mind, also can't conceal it. So like, by the time you're coming, that's at true. Him with yeah, you, right, you right. Can't you can't really. You can't well, conce- no, I mean, if you were off to the side, he's not chained to the bed or anything. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. if he comes and opens the door and has a tray in his hands, you just come around the corner of the door and whack him over i mean he'd be dead knocked out at least hopefully hopefully. so i i was just thinking you know how heavy those lids are he can go and get it i'm like "Mm, weapon but yeah so he he, use a phone (laughs) you know (laughs) full of dirt you've got a you've got a 50 a phone full of dirt i don't know those you feel those things pack those in with dirt that'll that will do some damage that's the whole point that's the phone saved him and then he literally uses it i mean you know using the phone as a weapon is like a Uh, double meaning yeah we should say that like the entire time there's the brother max is like upstairs i do like the line where you know he's explaining to the cops why you know he's got to live here he's very like you know <laughs> you know uh charlie day from yeah. always sunny like pointing things out <laughs> and the cops like you might want to clean up before yeah. your brother he's got like lines of coke that are just like yeah. sitting on the table i thought that was funny and that guy nice. so that guy's in sinister 2 okay he plays like oh there's uh, a he, sinister 2 I've yeah he played okay. don't okay uh, yeah don't he, it's don't. not scott yeah. derrickson it's not okay yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, but this guy plays like the cop who is. I think he may have been in Sinister One. I think that he was. And You're he comes Max. The yes, brother? the brother. He, he was in Sinister okay. One as like as a cop. He comes. Oh, back. he's the cop. He's the cop that um, believes Ethan them. Hawk, yes, he, he's the one that he says. Oh, in the books, there's always a c- thank you to. Yes, he's so that, deputy so and so. He's deputy so and so. So deputy so and so comes back for Sinister I Two. I knew he looked familiar. But he was I also in it. He played the older version of Richie. Right, James Ranson yes. is uh, the actor. Yeah, um, but he's pieced this together, and then he plays Eddie. Eddie, yeah, thank you. That's it. Uh, Richie's the other guy. Richie is. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, how that works. The yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so he pieces it together, and then there's a moment where he's sitting on the couch, and he was like, "Wait a minute." And he goes downstairs. Like zoom in on the map. He's like, "It can only be where these kids kids are kidnapped from." He's like. T- like pinpointing where it could be right and he zooms in zooms in and it's like his street and he realizes and he, he opens the, he goes downstairs and you hear like the click of the door and uh at this point i think uh i think Finn, he's ready to Finn, attack finn's got it all set this is up the end. He's, he's got he's got the hole he's got the 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 fridge is open he's got the cord he's yeah. got everything's ready to go the I, the phone full of dirt i really liked and something else i really liked was how the sister while all this is going on and Finn is trying to get help from all these the, the kids that have been kidnapped and passed away before him. The sister is having these visions in her dream and of bits and pieces. And we of... realize that that they're they're real and they're because of her powers. And th- she eventually stops having them. But you're seeing these throughout the film. And I really like how the stuff that she's seeing are what the kids are telling yeah. Finn on the phone because we later on see it with I think which was a really cool scene with the pinball kid. Yeah, and he's in the convenience. He reminded store me of the brother from Stranger. Stranger 
it, things. It's yeah, very much right. that, which is <laughs> yeah. same t- same ish time yeah, yeah, period yeah. and everything. But I like it that you know this kid messes up his pinball game, and then another kid bumps into him, and he fights him, and all these kids are fighting, and he's, he's kicking their asses. He cuts seven seven one four into the kid's arm. Yeah, which is the address for the house, and so she's seeing all this stuff happen, and she ends up we see the vision of like what they're doing in this spiritual flashback, and some of the lines are the same lines that he's hearing on the phone. Right. So I just like the way that it kind of cut back. You saw how they were, their powers were working in tandem. You had the sister getting the visions. I got to tell you, Rose the Hatch to come to this town. Cause yeah. good Lord, yeah. they're shining all over the yeah. place. <laughs> but uh, you like it that you like the sister has the visions and then whether he has this certain power or she's passing it to him, like we don't know. And right. I didn't necessarily need an explanation, but he's getting those same the same dialogue through the phone. So yeah. I just thought it was a really no, it was, cool, it was way, a cool to, little way to, to do that it. Yeah. Setup, yeah. So Max but opens the door. One of the, the kids tells him, packs the phone with, pack the phone it's, with it's dirt. Robin. Robin says, pack Robin. the okay. Yeah, because he gives him like little pointers on like how to dodge a punch. Yeah. And, and that was a really good moment. I mean, from a dramatic standpoint. And, and all the kids, when he's talking to them on the phone, you see them. They're not really there, but like their spirits are that in first, the background. I got to tell you, that first time we see a kid scared the crap out of me. <laughs> there's like, some that really, was a good jump scare. There's some really yeah. creepy jump scares when he's talking to them on the phone and it's dark down in this basement. You don't see much and like one kid's floating in the corner, which is a very he's, much he's a, upside down with like blood pouring from his neck. Yeah, yeah. I think that first uh, jump scare works uh, so well to your point, Joe. Be- I I anticipated something behind him because sure. of how the camera yeah. was moving. However, I did anticipate it that it was the grabber. I did not anticipate that it was uh, that was a paper. It was the paper boy, boy yeah, right? paper boy. Yeah, and so I so I like how oh okay how it the jump scare was still still worked very well and was surprising because I might have anticipated somebody behind him. However, I would not have anticipated the paper boy. Right. And that moment, uh, that moment did cause me to jump as well. Yeah. Good there one. were some good ones. Yeah. The, the, one of the early jump scares is the grabber. He wakes up and the grabber's like there in the dark oh, in the yeah, shadows yeah, yeah. watching him. And that's straight out of the store, short story where he's like, I just want to look at you or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, Ethan <laughs> Hawks, again, <laughs> we didn't really like touch on it, but Ethan Hawke's performance is really great. creepy, really good with the body language, but like he has this very soft spoken, uh, you know, I won't, I won't, make you do anything that you won't like or whatever right, right. and finn's just sitting there like what the f-? like <laughs> what did you put that's what you put in that salt and pepper yeah that was <laughs> a funny line too but yeah a really good performance creepy performance from ethan hawk like, right like skin crawling so uh yeah. max like opens the door and he was just like i knew it like and of course finn immediately knows he's not the grabber yeah. he's like i knew something was going on down here he's like you got to get me out of here he's like all right he's at work like we're gonna go and then all of a sudden you see the like axe. yeah you see the axe oh, what smash kill. him in the head great kill and uh you know poor poor max who got the axe uh yeah. like strum- stumbles down and like the kid you know the grabber uh pulls the axe which is another good effect where you hear like the whoosh, and like yep. out of the head the blood splatters all over the grabber yeah he's like look what you made me do and i was like well i'm finn didn't really do anything yeah. like, <laughs> well that's the, the one that figured that's it your out typical <laughs> villain behavior right. look what you made so he's me got do. the dog he brings the this massive like mastiff i think it's a mastiff like dog there's a dog like that in sinister too i feel like it's the oh, same maybe. i wonder if it was one of their like the dog had a three picture deal <laughs> yeah <That's> okay right. <laughs> i was wondering if it was derrickson's dog or he likes that type because there's a there's a dog in Sinister that looks very it. similar. He likes that type of dog. Stop making it a, a dick. A dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but he chains it to like the wall so that Finn can't, and like just in front of the door, so where Finn can't get out. Oh, and he did use the the he freezer. Did. He it's a freezer yeah. did. nowhere. Yes, he was able to get past the dogs. He threw right. a mistake. Because the so. mistake. Because the yeah. Because the steak melt yeah. defrosted. Right. Everything yeah. really does add up. Which yeah. I think is that was clever. my favorite thing was yeah. the steak for the dog. Oh, that was pretty the, good from the freezer. He's throwing, that was pretty yeah, good. he's throwing them out of the freezer. You see these frozen steaks flying around the room. Like you think you don't think anything of it. Yeah, ever I also used. do think I was like, don't those things have latches on the inside? Like, don't those freezers have Not latches? A freezer this like that. I guess 1978 probably too. wouldn't. That's and that true. that freezer was from the 50s. That's oh, fair. That's, that freezer that's also was a good old point. because we had <laughs> we had a refrigerator with that like kind, giant like with that kind of latch. Yeah, we see got stuck in the freezer. So, uh, oh, so, so, oh. so, so, she, so she she needed help to get out. <laughs> and Punky Brewster hasn't been made yet, so he doesn't know to stay out of refrigerators. <laughs> but but no, we had a and and those freezers will not die. No, they like I like my my mother in law still has one. My mother died in two thousand nine, and she was still using that refrigerator. <laughs> oh and we finally just like 
gave it away on Craigslist, and someone it came, makes sense came why took it. Indiana Jones dove into that one. And, See, yeah, we'll save you from anything. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, proof. Like honestly, like as someone who had a refrigerator like that, like that that scene in Indiana Jones that everybody likes to make fun of, I was like. I think that could work. <laughs> like that thing was I mean it was metal like it was solid it was it was solid yeah that's fun like it was it was that makes sense then I was like don't they have a latch on the inside yeah but like, no they, they didn't they probably I mean, wouldn't if it's from no. the 50s yeah totally. I mean that's why it was so refrigerators and stuff were so dangerous when you threw them away back then like that's they would oh. they would say they would always tell you like take the doors off when you get rid of them and because if a kid got in one game was, over bro there was no getting out yeah, they game didn't. over yeah, so but but a, and that was growing up in the seventies and eighties. They were still telling people to take the doors <laughs> off. So like that refrigerator was clearly like from mm-hmm. our freezer was clearly in the sixties. Like they were 50s. like, don't I tell you, yeah, like you lose you lose a kid in the fridge, you lose okay, a kid in the fridge. So, so we not the weak ones. Right. <laughs> so I got a story I have to tell you guys, and this is pro- there's probably going to be no other time that it's going to uh, work. When I was a kid, I, I want to say I was about four, maybe five years old. I locked myself in the refrigerator of, uh, of my parents' house, and it was unfortunately at a time in which there was a serial killer in, in my hometown. And so at four or five years old, uh, my parents can't find me at all because I climbed into the refrigerator to, uh, to get a drink. And so I was locked in the refrigerator for, for hours. I don't know how many hours had gone by, but it was most of the day. And of course, as you can imagine, uh, just in addition to losing your child, you know there's a serial killer on uh, who's yet to be apprehended. And oh. so, so, uh, so yes, that was. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it was that kind of refrigerator, but uh, kids can get stuck yeah. in wow. refrigerators. Yeah, and that's so, crazy. Um, yeah, so oh, maybe, uh, so maybe that's uh, that's why. Many guys I go on dates with tell me I'm a frigid bitch. Because <laughs> I got... Was that a long setup to get to that line? Is that what that was? <laughs> but like, there—I mean, there is a famous episode of Punky Brewster where yeah, a yeah, yeah I remember that one in a for sure. And it was a glorified public service announcement. Yeah, I definitely like, remember that one. Don't play in refrigerators, kids. Like, oh, it's, that'll learn you. Yeah, so this uh, is a great kill, though. Oh yeah, so guys... he gets them all set up right. So Ethan Hawke runs into the hole that he has dug. He... Anytime you set up a Home Alone esque booby trap ending. <laughs> To you're you know, in. taking on bad guys. Kevin's, That's my Kevin's thing. In. Yeah. He trips over the wire mm-hmm. into the hole. And once he's in the hole, the grate from the window, Ethan Hawk breaks his ankle oh, on the grate. So good. And now he's got the he's got to use like the the fighting technique that Robin has taught him mm-hmm. with the the dirt phone. And I like that. I didn't really touch on it, but the I thought it was a really good dramatic moment yeah. behind him where he's like he figures it he's out. like, You gotta do this. He's like he's like, What's the use? Whatever. He's like, You do it for us so we didn't die for nothing, whatever. It was a really well written right. touching moment between them where he's like yeah. do it for me so he beats the bejesus out of his you know uh ethan hawk and then at the last possible second he does like a back not really a backflip, but he jumps he grabs the you know he wraps the cord around his arms and he jumps over the bat like so well, ethan hawk is kind of got him like he's wrestled him to the ground yeah and he's able to get the phone cord around his neck and he jumps to his back and it's a move that robin had done earlier in the yeah in the in the movie and he grabs it and he wraps the the cord around his neck and he's you know pulling back on it and we hear the at this point the phone is ringing but obviously uh, Finn has the receiver. <laughs> I was like, this is the most eighties action, oh, like such a action badass. movie line where he's like, yeah. it's, for it's for you. you. It's a, and they, which they, is the last line of the short story. Oh, is it yeah. okay? And he said, you know, it's 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 uh, Bruce, and he says that kid's got you. He's got a mint arm, and he just like Snap. pulls down, oh. snaps his neck. This was a great. Kill. And, he, and now he he tosses the stake to the dog. The dog gets out of the way of the yeah. door. <clears throat> uh, we should say at this time that like the sister has called the cops because she's had another dream. And she's like, he is here. And they go to this house. And, of course, there's nothing in when the house. When they do the switch. I was, was like, that such, was good. That was, was a good move. I thought somehow he wasn't going to get saved in time or something <laughs> where I'm like, oh, my God, is this all for nothing? But they give you a little I bit I think it's a, good, it's a good move where, like, the cops find the, the secret basement. Mm. They're walking out. And as the cops are walking out, Finn comes walking out from across the street. Mm. And it's like this massive moment where they're all happy. And I do like the – actually, I, I agree about the dad. I think I th- took it as, like, in that moment – he is sober, but come tomorrow he's not going to be. Yeah. Right? Like I, you know, I mean, I think I don't in think real that's life, what the movie. I think in real life that's it. Yeah, that's probably happens, true. Yes. But I, yeah, I don't think that's what the movie. I says. don't. I think the movie was trying to put a bow on yeah. it. Well, I think uh, to me the bow should have been. 
him walking into school and all the kids are like, I like the one line where you can see the one kid say, I thought he'd be taller. Like, yeah. it's, you know, I love it. The kids are all talking. That's, oh, that's, the, that's him. Yeah. That's, that's, like they're still not. Some of them are like, oh, like, he's cool. But then the, some of them the are three, like that the, guy. The like, three bullies are like, oh, all right, we're just not going <laughs> to mess with that kid ever again. I, I liked all the chatter. Though. I yeah. thought it was really good. Now he'll talk to the girl. Now talk yeah. to the girl. Call. He says she's from St. Louis, by the way. Is that right? Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and she says, you know, she, I think she calls him Finney and he was like, call me Finn. Finn and yeah. that's how it ends. And I was like, I, I like, I, I took this as like a dark Amblin movie and I, I hear what you're saying, but it just felt like to me, the Amblin stuff was, and I say Amblin, but it's kind of like a blanket term for like Goonies or any of those yeah. stand by me. It's and so kid driven. Yeah. So kid where the adults aren't there. Yeah. yeah. Kids just got to figure this shit out for themselves. Yeah. So I took this as like a darker version of mm-hmm. like an Amblin movie. I, I don't think that's. A crazy take. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, thank you. Yeah, like I said, there there are definitely some things that could have been better. Overall, I enjoyed the movie, but I there are but uh, you know I don't think the it's criticisms the game are valid that people are saying that it is agreed. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think it was good. It wasn't great. I enjoyed it. But I like, enjoyed yeah, my hour forty five minutes. I didn't look at my yeah. watch. Yep. So Ryan, do you yep. like it anymore now that we have we convinced you at all? Or are you still? Kind of... <laughs> no, I'm still. I, I'm still. I. Uh, I find so much of the film to be rather tasteless, but there's no accounting for taste now, is there? <laughs> uh, so I, I find many uh, many elements, and, and I go into a few more details in my review. Probably still about where I am, uh, but you did <laughs> highlight some uh, elements that I did not think of, so there are more individual elements of yeah. the film that I can say that I do like a little more. Okay, okay. cool. Awesome. Well, I guess uh, that's it for this one. Let's go around the table and everyone can say where to find this. This is Joe. You can follow me on the Twitter at Joey Butts, B-U-T-T-S 21. This is Kevin. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin R. Brackett and subscribe to the Games We Love podcast. And Ryan, where can they find you and your wares? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at RL Terry one. Uh, uh, my shows uh, uh, come to a close, so there still will be um, four more episodes eventually that I, I need to edit. But no, the show... I just uh, it's a great experiment mm-hmm. in the podcast medium and was a lot of fun. But uh, you know, just uh, you're gonna start going in a different direction. But oh. hey, I wrote what would be the equivalent of twenty some odd half hey. hour episodes of TV. So so that is uh, no so mean what, feat. That's my no, takeaway not at all. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. It's a fun show and it's still out there for you to listen to and, and it's not wrapped up yet. So I would say definitely check it out. Give it a listen. And I, I think you'll be hooked. It's really fun. And yeah. you never know. Never say never. It could always mm-hmm. come back in some uh, in another medium or revival. So you never know. <laughs> This is the this is true. Uh, it certainly, if it, it could be on TV, if you're listening and you, and you need <laughs> and you need something for syndication, you got to fill in uh, some time like three well, o'clock in the afternoon on your TV station. <laughs> sure, so, four is a crowd. Yeah. Check it out; it's really fun. <laughs> and then uh, also, you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebookcom slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at facebookcom slash Real Spoilers, and of course, our Patreon, patreoncom slash Real Spoilers. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, Clifford kills Duncan. Get ready for a spoiler. Won't say it's